actually think that it would be so much nicer if you could please move up, otherwise we so loud and shout to get to, if you don't mind. You begin with getting everybody to... Yes. <laughs> I'd like to um, officially welcome you all and welcome the panel. My name is Charlotte, Charlotte Böving. I'm very good in Danish. I'm okay in Atlantic and okay in English. So I'll do my best here. But um, and um, I would like to welcome the panel, which is uh, Jesper Mortos, and he's a producer. And I would like um, you all afterwards to tell a little bit more about your work hmm? and what you do. And Mikkel Yersin, uh, who's also a producer and, and just had, um, had the premiere with uh, Runa Runasen yesterday. He's a producer of the film Runa Runa. Probably know it. Um, so, and Runa Runasen was the, he's a scriptwriter and, and director. So, uh, but the thing is that I would like to open this instead of that. I'm telling something about you. I would like to tell you that ask you, take a little time, uh, each one of you, to tell which film are you do, what are you doing, uh, doing TV drama. I know that you're also doing TV drama and uh, short films and uh, a little about, bit about your background, um, maybe about schools, because I know you're from Super Seisten. No, I no, you're from Super Seisten and you're from the, the, theater, uh, the film school in Copenhagen. So, because it will be interesting also to talk about the school system, if he, it has something to say about this Danish success, because that, that's what we're going to talk about. And of course, it's not, not only about the Danish success, um, it's also an Icelandic success, because they just won a prize in San Sebastian, the biggest prize in San Sebastian. And, um, and of course, uh, Danish fi uh, Icelandic film is also an upcoming um, business. So um, it would be, uh, but that's the theme that we're going to talk about. And I, I have some questions and I would like you also uh, ask some questions. And we have a, if we're so few and you're so close, maybe we can just take it without the microphone. But um, now we'll just start. And uh, yes, but will you start? And, yes, uh, yes, I can tell a little bit about myself. Uh, now you will get uh, this uh, discussion from the uh, younger generation of Danish <laughs> cinema. I somehow feel that that should be somebody uh, from uh, some of our mentors, some experiences uh, for much longer. Yeah, but uh, now you will hear it for, from us. Um, I, uh, as Charlotte said, graduated from uh, Super 60 Film School, which is an alternative film school in Copenhagen. Uh, which I guess started somehow as a, some kind of process to the Danish film school. Some, some people didn't get into the film school, opened up their own film school in 1999. Uh, and uh, I started, uh, and it's uh, Super 16, it's based on Nordisk film, a uh, big Danish Nordic uh, film. And uh, they have been funding And uh, I, huh? ask you to Difficult to hear. We're streaming this. Wow, okay. that oh. is ambitious. <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> no, I wish. I, I don't think there'll be that many. Oh, but um, okay. Seems a little stupid. So when yeah. we, <laughs> now, now we stopped. Uh, we 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 are we. It will be like around uh, a one hour, one and a half hour, just as you know. You know, this panel will be around, and there will be a little drink outside after the panel, just as you know. Is it not? Uh, no. not hello, 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 hello. Okay. Okay, I have to do like this. No, that is. Okay, you have to be like this. So to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll try to be. <laughs> no, so I. What? Yeah, I don't know. We'll. 
for our three streaming. So then you have to yes. do like this, yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I will. I would prefer just to. I don't know. Be in the room somehow. <laughs> uh, no. So I graduated in 2006 from Super 16, and um, it's a it's a film school. I mean, it's quite interesting to talk about all this actually. Also uh, in this uh, with this theme because. Uh, I think it's one of the biggest things that have happened the last 20 years because, I mean, with, with you know, the thing with getting more alternative, different uh, uh, educations uh, and, and, and ways to get into the film industry in Denmark because prior, I mean, if you didn't, uh, uh, if you didn't attend the Danish film school, which very few people are, uh, because it's, I mean, six people every second year getting in, uh, then uh, it was really difficult. I mean, it was not possible to 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 get into the Danish film industry, I think, and that has changed a lot the last 20 years. And uh, uh, it seems like that um, uh, just as many, and maybe in periods even more, directors from Super 16 are are, are, are doing extremely well, uh, getting to do uh, their features, having success, uh, get, getting to do features again, uh, and um, that is just that is just really interesting, I think, and very good for uh, such a small film industry where it's very hard, very difficult to have uh, 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 something else. I mean, everything gets very much the same. I think when when you are such a small country, it's very hard to have. Uh, 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 something going up against uh, uh, the, 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 the big systems, the established systems, and I think that is important. So I think that is actually a very important thing that has happened in the last 10 years in Denmark. While uh, attending Super 16, I worked uh, at Nimbus Film for six years, uh, where Megal has also been working. And, uh, and uh, then after that I worked at, uh, and there I made a lot of uh, uh, I began to produce a lot of shorts at uh, a, a, a special uh, supporting scheme we, we have in Denmark called New Danish Screen, which is supporting uh, new talents uh, and artistic uh, challenging projects. Uh, and I made a lot of shorts there which, with, with young directors uh, in my own generation, which went well, but went to the different big festivals in Berlin and Venice and so on. Uh, and then I uh, continued from Nimbus to Alphaville Pictures, a small art house company founded by um, Christopher Bow, Danish director who made Reconstruction, won a Camarador in Cannes for that, and made a lot of other art films. And then uh, four years ago, I changed to SF Film Production, which is a Danish uh, uh, daughter company of uh, SF Svensk Film Industry in um, Sweden, the, the very big uh, production and distribution company based in Stockholm. So uh, there I have been since, and uh, I am doing features. I have uh, just done Silent Heart with Peter August. Uh, now I'm producing Hearthstone, a Danish Icelandic film, much the same setup as Sparrows, uh, which is also something very interesting we can talk a little bit about this thing of small nations joining forces somehow. <laughs> uh, and um, we're shooting right now at the eastern coast of Iceland. Uh, we're shooting, we've been shooting for two months and shooting one more week. And then we move the whole post-production to Copenhagen for the edits and sound design and everything. And it's a very funny way of, you know, uh, of um, working together between two small Nordic uh, countries. Uh, and uh, then I'm also doing a TV series called uh, Rita, which is a Netflix series. Uh, originally, it started as uh, as a TV2 Denmark series, and then Netflix bought themselves in into this third season, and uh, and now it's uh, a co-production between Netflix and TV2 Denmark and a Netflix original series, and we just finished the third season of that. So it is aired, broadcasted world. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. um, it was actually uh, extremely interesting what you said about the school system, and I think that uh, this is something we should get back to after the presentations because that is, of course, one of the cornerstones 
of the Danish film industry is the food chain of of talents. But um, just to briefly introduce myself, my name is uh, Mikkel Jersen and I'm a producer. I recently produced Runa's film, uh, Sparrows, it's called Plist, Plist the, uh, in Icelandic. <laughs> it's great, I can't pronounce it after years of working on it. <coughs> and um, I've been working at uh, Nimbus for the last four years and before that I attended the Royal Danish Film School. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, and uh, before that, I was at uh, Copenhagen Business School uh, doing uh, uh, marketing. So um, at Nimbus Film, I um, was very interested in uh, working with co-productions, and that was one of the things I said when I was em employed um, that I would like to make it into a focus area of the company. And I started actively uh, searching for interesting projects, and we already had like lots of interesting offers coming in that we could co-produce, but it was not something that the company took very seriously. But um, for me, it was uh, a good way um, to elevate my career fast and learn a lot from um, yeah, from, from other producers uh, all over Europe and find out how they would, were putting financing together and also a way of you know, being involved in, in much bigger projects than we could uh, normally do from, from our own company. So, so um, I think I was involved in five uh, co-productions um, throughout the last two years. And the most recent one is um, Louder Than Bombs by Joachim Trier. That was in, in uh, the competition in Cannes this year. And uh, another one which is uh, in post-production now is uh, Penilla August, Swedish director, new, new feature film written by Lone Scherfik, which is also like a really big project. Um, so, so this has been a good learning curve for me to, to dig into the world of co-productions. And also I think it's something that of course we can discuss a little bit in in terms of why uh, small nations end up being successful with their projects. And I think one of the reasons is that we have to co-produce. But we can get back to that later. Yeah, and um, that was a more or less short introduction. So I will pass on the word to you, Bruna. <coughs> yeah, hello. Uh, my name is yeah, Runa Runason, and uh, I guess the reason why I'm in this panel is uh, I'm born in Iceland, but I lived in Denmark for nine years. During these uh, nine years, I attended uh, the National Film School of Denmark for four years, and uh, and uh, my first two feature films are uh, yeah uh, as Danish as Icelandic uh, yeah uh, yeah they are more or less uh, me two mini majors uh, together so I've been uh, heavily subsidized by 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 the by, by the the Danish film fund I graduated uh, from the uh, school in 2009 and did my first feature. Uh, I yeah, went shooting it the year after, and it had a premiere in 2011. And uh, and then we did, yeah just uh, premiered our uh, second feature uh, now I I in the autumn. And uh, yeah, I agree uh, about uh, talking about uh, the school system, and as well uh, that we should dig into later as well is what happened after the school and uh, how the Danish Film Society is having actually uh, further schemes to, to de develop uh, their talents, like with the new Danish screen that we should talk about later. Okay. Thank you. Um, then I would like you to, um, it seems for me like you're talking about uh, and this, that like the, the Nordic countries are co cooperating, and I, I assume that, and, and one, I've read about that one of the big great success in Denmark is this creative teams. And I was thinking, um, it seems like these creative teams are in many levels. It's, uh, and I would like to ask you about uh, the levels, like if you could start with the school system, you know, how do you work on, how do you, um, how is this creative team, um, how are you brought up in this thinking of doing creative the themes? 
And um, so it, it starts, if you could talk about that compared to the school system, and also what happens when you go out compared to the creative teams and the Nordic creative teams. It seems like it's, it's a lot of, um, on, on many levels, you have creative teams. Hmm? So, who would like to begin? From the royal teams. <laughs> <laughs> and shouldn't we just in general have the forum like that? Uh, if I feel like saying something, then I will interrupt you and we try to yes, have yeah. it alive. Yes. And, and you guys, if you... Let's interrupt. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you should really interrupt us uh, as well if, if you have some questioning. Yeah. And, and yeah, all right. Um, there is a, a, a term that is used quite a lot in, in Denmark, which is the creative triangle. And the idea is that the director, the screenwriter and the producer should be working very closely together at all times. And they should more or less uh, give birth to the project together and be in a some symbiosis at all times. Um, but I don't think that even though the term exists, I don't think it... Uh, it's necessarily true in reality. It's not for all projects that it's a good idea to, uh, to to approach it like that. And some some projects, such as Sparrows, has a director and a screenwriter who is the same, and who are also involved of the producing part of the film. So I think all projects are different. Silent Heart was also very different. Yeah. But I, d I would like to add one thing, though, and that is that... Um, a lot of Danes are from the same film school, and for Bruna as a case, he, if, if you don't mind. Um, Being a case? <laughs> yes, sir. Case study. Case study. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sounds a little bit better. Yes. He found his uh, creative team at uh, the film school, and by that I mean uh, your DOP and your editor. And you guys have been working very closely together at film school, and you also went out and did your first project after film school, and now again the second project together. Um, and what is quite clear to me as a producer, I was only involved in the, in the recent one, Sparrows, is that um, you guys have all developed. So it's really fun to see uh, the difference from Volcano and onto Sparrows because you're all so much better. And it's clear that everybody has grown, but still, you are st it's still the same band uh, joining for a new concert. Yeah, if, if it makes sense. So in that sense, there are creative teams that are crafted from early age. And I also think that Denmark in particular is, and, and I'm sure it's the same for Iceland, it's such a small country that a lot of people know each other very well within the creative processes. So we have more or less the same film language. Um, and that is, of course, easy to communicate about our ideas and how we do stuff because it's, it's a very small country. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned mentioned just briefly, Runa, that the that the whole thought we have in our film system in Denmark about you know uh, taking care, nurturing uh, talents, having a new Danish screen, where you also made your first film, yeah. right, Volcano. Uh, uh, basically, I wouldn't have been able to make no. a, a feature without uh, that scheme. No, even uh, new new Danish screen. Yeah. And it's uh, it's for uh, it's thought as the yeah the next ground after uh, all the, uh, the alternative school that you went to yeah. or the royal one <laughs> that, that you went to uh, to keep on uh, developing yeah. and, and uh, sometimes people go to into this medium uh, format uh, uh, films that are so unpractical in, in in many ways but such a necessary step for further development. Uh, I had been really privileged uh, and, and, and lucky. I had done a lot of short films before the film school and as well uh, outside of the film school uh, with my creative team uh, that had been uh, picking up awards. So, uh, and we looked quite good on paper, but nevertheless, it's hard to finance a, a first feature. And with the uh, financial crash of Iceland, and this debutant uh, fund uh, in, the, uh, in, in Denmark, uh, five million Danish kroners uh, is uh, nothing in Denmark. But uh, it is, it, it's it's still it's, buy some uh, houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it compared to production sense, yes. yes. 
it's you can't do a feature uh, with, with with crew and, and shoot no, no, no. on film and, and just uh, and etc. You have to really th yeah. think in in small scale. Uh -huh. But uh, we had the opportunity of of moving that money uh, uh, up up to Iceland and make uh, a quite big budget in Icelandic standards uh, feature film. Can you tell the, the new Danish screen? screen it's called the new yeah. Danish. How yeah. does it work? It, it uh, I mean, just to finish what, what I, it, yeah, just to finish what I was about to say about that is that I think you know, just in terms of having something like New Danish Green, which is as as a talent scheme, uh, a support scheme, you know, for new talents, uh, they have to be, uh, 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 they have to be established talents, as they call it, which means they have to come from. Uh, either the uh, Danish Film School or Super 16 or have, have, have made some shorts maybe with support from the Danish Film Workshop where Gudmund Dua, uh, the director I'm making Hearthstone with now, he made Whale Valley that then went to Cannes and, and won an award there. Um, that was at the Danish Film Workshop which is, which is a not only low budget but, but non-budget uh, 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 support scheme. It's, you know, for and you can be 19 and, and go there, and if you have a good project, then you, then you can get uh, uh, support, not in terms of money, or yeah, maybe... It's not money. No, uh, $3,000 or something, uh, uh, euros or whatever. Yeah, but, but uh, then all it's, the facilities. Uh, exactly, facilities, uh, equipment, uh, post-production uh, uh, facilities, and so on. But you have to work for free, and your whole crew needs to work for free, and the actors need to work for free. Uh, so it's you know it's the beginning of the food chain somehow. So so that is the Danish film workshop, and then you have new Danish screen as next step, which is not non-budget but low budget, and then you have the whole commissioning editing system, uh, uh, yeah, which is you know is as this, in many uh, other countries. Can I ask, is it only is it only for people with a Danish passport, or is it for Nordic? I don't think Runa has a Danish passport, do you? No, I mean, but he went to the Danish school. Yeah. So I, I, I lived there for three yeah, years yeah, before yeah. I started the school. Yeah, yeah. But I, I would like to... Uh, no, because uh, it could be interesting Yeah, it is. for people here yeah. if they could apply for... You have, yeah. to, you have to register in in uh, in Denmark. Yeah, you have to, you have to live in, I mean, to be... Uh, to have... Yeah. Yeah, pay, pay your taxes in Denmark. Yeah. If, if you have any. But you don't have... I mean... And obvi obviously it's the Danish Film Institute, so... I mean, and it's... A, taxpayers money so it's primarily primarily there to support Danish films uh, but I mean there have been a lot of Icelandics getting support there have been Swedish there have been uh, a New Zealand director there have been I mean all living in Denmark uh, and and producing you know having a delegate or a major Danish producer on the project obviously but uh, yeah so but I still wanted to finish by the whole thing about um, that I think that there is a very clear vision or uh, uh, understanding in the Danish film system and industry that when you are such a small country and, and s such a small country where the film industry cannot really be a business on, you know, and it cannot at all be a business on, on commercial, uh, you know, uh, 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 private uh, level. I mean, we are, we are heavily dependent of being subsidized by the by the state, uh, otherwise there would simply not be any Danish films, and uh, it is for sure the same in Iceland and Sweden and, and Norway and Finland as well. Uh, so, when we are that far away of of you know making big business out of it, I mean in the U.S. it's a big business, in Germany it's a big big business, in France and U.K. and so on. Also, even though they have you know state government, but it's a much bigger business because it's you know huge markets. Uh, so, so there is an understanding that uh, that uh, I mean we are supporting. I mean, th there is a there is a somebody has made a choice in Denmark that it is important for us to have Danish films and a Danish film culture, and uh, so it's a, a whole other you know way into uh, into thinking uh, film, and therefore there's also space for you know for 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 this understanding of uh, nurturing. Uh, uh, the lowest uh, level in the food chain, you know, getting new talent. I mean, I'm, in U.S. and other market-driven uh, uh, industries, I mean, there's nobody who's thinking about taking in new talent unless there's, you know, a, a, a money strategy behind it. So, so it's, I mean, 
it, it, there is a very uh, specific food chain and there is very much awareness of the importance of, uh, you know, feeding, uh, feeding the, the, the food chain, the, the film industry, the Danish film industry with, with uh, new talents all the time. And when things are tough in the business, as it has been in Denmark for the last, uh, uh, economically, financially, in the last five years, uh, then you can uh, at once see how the companies begin to pull away from talent development. I mean, before Centropa used to be extremely visionary on taking in new talents, taking a re responsibility to, to develop new talents. And of course, they did it not because they wanted to take a responsibility for the film industry, but because they wanted eventually to make good business. Uh, but uh, when uh, times are tough, then you can see a, a very... Uh, very big decline in the company's uh, wish uh, to uh, to do talent development, and therefore Centropa is not doing any more t talent development. Nimbu is not doing any more talent development, and so on. So, um, so, and at that certain times, it's very important that we have uh, a film institute and and a state uh, fund taking care of uh, of. Uh, of nurturing uh, the new talents because the companies are not uh, at the moment. <clears throat> uh, about a little bit uh, why the success of the Danish film. I think the fundament in it, yeah, there are many reasons, but one fundament that is nurturing all the setups that we've been going through is actually uh, the Danish film school. Yeah. Uh, it is great to have this uh, workshop place where people can go, make their first films, and, and, and uh, get c counseling. The DOPs and the sound designers and, and everybody, they are studying in the, in, 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 in the film school, and it's extra project that, they're, uh, that they are, that they are uh, taking on with the school or just after they graduate. So do they do it with pro bono to, to uh, become better. Uh, and the same with Super 16, uh, even though it's uh, set up with uh, eight directors and eight producers, the, the craftsmanship that comes in, 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 into those productions as well, it's all, all, from, the film school. all from the film school, yeah. while they are attending it or uh, just after they have graduated. And, uh, and the same thing with the, the, the new Danish uh, screen films afterwards. Uh, most of... Uh, then some uh, experience, more experienced people uh, comes in the project as well. But it's not only to develop uh, the directors, it's the, 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 the writers and the DOPs and everybody. And, uh, and all these projects as well uh, are, are done with, uh, oh, yeah, with the, 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 the technical artists from the Danish Film School. So the Danish Film School is, in a way, the... the, the the fundament of, of 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 all these different uh, schemes, if if so to say. Yes. So what changed in the the film school ten ten or twenty years ago? The Polnesko. Yeah, I think it is. It is definitely. Uh, I mean, it's more than. It, it might be twenty five. I, I actually years think. Ago. I actually think it's very much the generation before us. Uh, for example, uh, our former. Uh, CEOs at Nimbus, uh, Boerhard and Birgit Halt, for example, that, that, that made uh, the celebration, Festen and Mifune and all the Dogma films, a few years after they graduated from film school in 93. Uh, so I think the big uh, kind of, you know, change uh, happened there. A and then there was like 10 fantastic years for Danish film, and then it declined, and uh, then uh, money began to be an issue, and uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of other issues, you, you know, people get children and they <laughs> get old and the new people need to take over somehow. I mean, it's also, you know, you know, every 10, 15 years, I mean, Peter Olbeck has said it, you know, very, uh, very uh, uh, precisely that, you know, his own generation, I mean, every 10, 15 years, uh, you have energy, you know, to, to change the world or to change some systems or, or do something against the the established, you know, for for a certain amount of years, and then somebody new has to uh, has to move in. And I actually think Centropa has uh, uh, used to be very visionary about that, but that is unfortunately not really a, a possibility for them right now, uh, and have been for many years. So, um, 
And then I think, uh, I mean, w what have happened since our last crisis <laughs> uh, in the in the Danish film industry is that, you know, after the whole dogma and the whole very much the triangle, I mean, the golden triangle that is that is like all, all, already 25 years ago. The golden triangle is that. Yeah, oh, sorry, the go it's because I went on the golden uh, tour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the screen, the screen the producer. producer and director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a team, a creative team. Yeah. yeah, that was very much the idea in the beginning of the 90s, you know, that kind of made, made the whole dogma thing, you know, working like that. Uh, and what I think, you know, what ha has happened, if I should, I mean, it's really hard still to, you know, kind of, you know, look have an overview and say that and that and that has happened. But I think that the, what has been most, you know, significant the last, uh, I don't know, five, ten years has been, you know, uh, the the merge of the creativeness and the artistic approach, which is very much out of the whole dogma movement, and, you know, merging it with, you know, also some more commercial eyes or commercial glasses somehow, you know, uh, keeping the the creative artistic core in the project. I mean, le le always let the projects uh, begin with some kind of creative or artistic vision, and then when it is developing, you know, quite quickly begin to to also you know try to look at the project, which is very much I think the producer's you know job task to do. Uh, look at the project with commercial glasses and and uh, or commercial eyes and uh, and uh, try to uh, try to optimize i mean because it is definitely possible to optimize <laughs> uh, uh, almost all projects and and to open them up to the audience and try to find you know package you know package it somehow but not you know it's very interesting to package uh, nordic uh, upmarket dramas uh, instead of you know big hollywood films because it is of course possible to to do that somehow, and 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 to in a in a very early stage uh, begin to think in uh, how how should uh, the audio I mean who should connect to this and how should they do it you know uh, always of course of course keeping the core uh, uh, the the the, uh, the creative core but but still having that you know that merge which Susanne Beer has been extremely successful with. With Thomas Winterberg has been extreme. I mean, he he is he's very interesting because he was he was a part of the of the whole uh, wave 20 years ago with the Dogma, you know, wave had huge success, and then he went away, you know, for 10 years, made some weird films. Um, everybody thought he was, you know, kind of out, and then he actually kind of reinvented himself in this. I think. I mean, everything is just my personal <laughs> opinion. Uh, he kind of reinvented himself with this uh, in in this uh, merge between uh, you know the artistic creative you know vision in in the core of the project, but then packing you know packing it into a, a, a you know a more commercial package also. Uh, and um, yeah, I think a lot of I mean the the same is happening with Lars von Trier. I mean. Uh, uh, with a very strong, obviously, artistic call, but I still, it's all about the package, you know, and finding your your niche audience uh, and and making it as <laughs> they are doing it very much in the in the. I mean, he's doing it with the cast, and, and they're doing it in the marketing of the project, you know, uh, finding ways to uh, to to, uh, to make these really uh, really um, niche art house films that he is actually doing making them, you know, very important for a lot of art house fans around the world to see. Um, I think one thing that's important to point out um, and, and explain how it works is uh, the Danish Film Fund and um, or the Danish Film Institute. Um, I know some of you probably already completely understand how it works, but I just think it's important to, to explain a little bit about it. It has... Um, two different main schemes. The one is a marketing scheme that supports uh, commercially oriented movies. Um, and these movies are supposed to uh, do well in the market and they are being evaluated by a panel and this panel will look at it, you know, how many tickets can this movie possibly sell? And then there is the um, artistic scheme, you can call it that. It's 
and that has two consultants film con or film commissioners that are evaluating the, pro the projects when they come in. And they are only judging based on uh, artistic potential of a project. And the reason why I think this is important uh, to mention is because I think the fact that we have this system has uh, forced us, at least if you want to apply for the artistic uh, commissioning uh, editor system, then it has forced us to try to make the best possible script on artistic levels, not on commercially oriented levels. So, and there is a heavy competition to get this kind of money because all directors would of course like to uh, be evaluated by a commissioning editor and just get money to do the exact film they want to do without having to think too much about the market. Um, of course, everybody wants to sell tickets as well, but they'd rather make the, the, the vision they have in mind and then you know, hopefully it can also sell tickets. So what I, what I just wanted to say as a point is that uh, having this system for years and years and years has forced uh, the Danish culture to think about um, how they make the artistically best possible script and, um, and how that script can go round and round and outcompete other uh, screenplays that are also being crafted as the best possible artistic script. And, um, and having a system like that, um, I'm not sure it exists in too many other countries. I know that uh, Norway has actually copy pasted the Danish Film Fund more or less, and, and you know they they sent people to Denmark and investigated fully how the system was built, and they actually kind of hired people from the Danish Film Fund to go to Norway and you know, make more or less the same system. They even made a film school very similar to the Danish Film School to to try to try and create the same thing and. How does it work? Does it work the same? Uh, commissioning editors, you know, only, uh, you know. It, Everything is, of course, in a smaller scale uh, yeah. here. Uh, I think there are about 150 people that work in uh, the Danish Film Institute. There are seven in Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and with the success of Icelandic films this this year, it's just too much workload for them. Yeah, and uh, they are. They are doing, have been doing a great job uh, for years, but uh, uh, yeah, they don't have the mandate to, to deal with this because it's so small. So everything is in a much smaller scale here, of course. And uh, what was a breakthrough in Iceland, uh, I guess, what? I'm always getting older than I think I am. Uh, around maybe 15 years ago or something like that, then they, the Icelandic Film Fund started to have a a uh, short and documentary funding, and uh, I was lucky that yeah, I was one of those that uh, got a little bit m money f uh, in the first round of uh, the short films, and uh, so we have sl slowly be you know, Iceland has slowly started to 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 build up careers uh, as well, but don't have have the means to do it in, in the same way uh, as as uh, Denmark has been doing it, and maybe that's a political decision as well. To take the next next step and uh, nurture this generation that is coming up now in Iceland, and as well prepare for the next one. So uh, there is a, 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 a school here that is more like a uh, like the, the the school in Ebeltoft, like a pre thing to to figure out in which line you you want to uh, put your creativity into. But of course, it's not in the same same, uh, same uh, level as uh, uh, those uh, two schools, the Royal and and and, and the the streetwise one. But there has been students uh, that have been uh, uh, it has been running. It's a private school, and yeah, that's uh, maybe as an uh, important factor as well. There is in the art uh, school here. Yeah, there is not a line there. And there has been talk about uh, maybe founding a line there. Uh, I guess that's why. The, I mean, we have Iceland change. Yeah, uh, and Swedish people, and and, yeah. and Norwegian people, yeah. and and uh, and that's. Uh, I've sometimes not only been asked why is Danish film good. I've been asked as well, uh, what are the natural resources of Denmark? Why is Denmark a uh, rich society. Yeah, Denmark doesn't have any natural resources in a way. No. So, 
uh, you're a good businessman and, and you prepare and you think out of the box and yeah the natural resource of Denmark is the brains and, and, and the education system and the, the fundamentals of the this, of the social welfare there. And uh, Danish film doing well, yeah. Design as well and everything that is man made or trades and, 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 and stuff like that. Uh, so I guess it's in your genes for centuries to to figure out ways to, to, to survive. Great. Names yeah. are traders. Yeah. Uh, traders. Yeah, traders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can I ask one more? Um, about, um, thinking about uh, the, 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 the screen, uh, the screen, um, the scripts. Because also in the script, uh, I, the, the, they've been doing a lot in Denmark about uh, the script screenplay uh, education, hasn't it? So can you tell a little bit about that, if you know something about it in the, the, theater uh, the film school, sorry. I can, I can yeah. start a little bit. Um, at the Danish film school, there is actually a screenwriter program as well. And it used to be two years, but now it's actually increased to four years. And um, like the other programs, they take six students every uh, second year. And and it's very competitive to get in, and uh, so we have more or less raised a whole, like a whole breed of talents coming out from from uh, the National Film School. Now, actually, uh, Super 16 has also gotten a screenwriter program, and right now the Danish screen screenwriters are in high demand, especially since of uh, the Nordic Noir wave, um, the the big TV shows and everything like that. Many of the uh, acclaimed screenwriters who were working on the, the first Nordic Noir TV shows, they have uh, moved to US or are involved in US productions. So, and so the remaining who stays, they are more, many of them are permanently employed by the national broadcaster developing new TV shows. That leaves room for the new generation in terms of uh, feature film development. And um, in my personal opinion, we actually have a big uh, lack of screenwriters in Denmark um, because they are in such high demand that it's actually really hard to find a screenwriter for your project these days. But uh, fortunately, the film school has, uh, you know, increased their program and is aiming uh, even more intensively on uh, making the best talents uh, available. And also, Super 16 has made their own screenwriter program. So I think. How long is the school in Super 16? Sorry. <laughs> it's uh, it's three years, and it is something you do. I mean. Uh, it is, I mean, it's a, it's a very anarchistic school. It is a street school. <laughs> it, it is funded at Nordisk Film and, and using, you know, at their main office. But besides that, it's totally run for three years by the students who are attending uh, the school in those three years. So it, it, it can be extremely chaotic and, and very, you know, we have, no, we have nobody taking care of us. <laughs> And now it's almost 10 years since I graduated and, and uh, uh, I mean, things happening for each new, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, each, 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 new, uh, each new generation getting into the Super 16, something new happens because you can just, I mean, you can just change it the way you, if you can agree on, on it in the group, uh, then you can just, you know, do something new. So it's, it's very anarchistic and of course it's a very tough system because somebody, you know, falls totally apart when they have no uh, guidance. But I think that uh, some also really gets a chance to stand out, you know, and uh, because you don't have to uh, to fit in as much as uh, you in periods uh, have had to, you know, as how it was at the Danish Film School, where it was very much also about being in a group, being able to, you know, I, I know so many directors from the Danish Film School who has been in problem uh, in problems with the with the, with the principals and you know and the and the teachers because they wanted to do something but the teachers didn't think they should do it like that and you know so so in Super 16 I mean you can do whatever and it can go I mean it can totally fall apart but it can also be yeah, you know extremely good um, so it's three years and. Uh, uh, the the scripts um, and it is uh, it is not full time. I mean, it, the school is designed that you should have a 
I worked at Nimbus Film. Uh, you know, my first three years at Nimbus Film was when I uh, attended Super 16. So it's like uh, you 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 have classes two two times per week in the evening, and then you make uh, uh, one film per year, three films, uh, uh, first year film, midway, and graduation film. You know, over the three years, and then you have different workshops and and courses. You know, in the weekends, and so it's um, it's uh, yeah, it goes like that. Yeah. Is commercial. Um, this the commissioning editor. So there's two commissioning editors. So I'm wondering how does that work? How old are they? How often do they turn over? Because I'm thinking about the contrast between the two schools here, and then this carries on. So who are they? They are people. Do you mind? No. They they are um, people from the from the industry, and they normally have a huge experience within different fields of the industry. And they are normally also quite different from each other. And they're hired for uh, four years each, and then they can uh, have one extra year if they, are, you know, if, if they want to and if, if they are rehired. And the way it works is that um, you send in your project, and if they like it, you are invited for a meeting or a session, and you discuss what should be the next steps for the project. And most of the times, you send in a screenplay, maybe they... Uh, have some notes on it and you get a little bit of money to take home with you and you can work a couple of extra months and then, then you send it back and that goes on for two or three rounds. Then you can get a bit of development support to do some casting, to do some location scouting, to take the project to the next step. And if they like it, they will invite you to make an, uh, an application for a production grant. And sometimes they're not inviting you for the application of the production grant. Then you invite yourself. And that's normally not a good idea. They they really have to, you know, uh, invite you to. Now is the time for you to take the next step. So you more or less agree on the whole process with them, if if possible. And uh, right now we have two new consultants uh, just hired. The the first one is called Mikkel Munkfels, and he is um, actually a director, who directed two feature films uh, himself, and he's al also. Uh, been involved in art circles for many, many years, and he's quite an, yeah, film critic as well in national television. He's quite a known figure in Denmark. The other one is Hedden Palmquist, who was uh, this uh, the this main commi commissioning editor of the Nordic Film and TV Fund for, I think, ten years or something. So she must have read thousands of screenplays from the Nordic countries throughout the last many years. And she was also employed by SVT as a commissioning edit editor for their drama department, and before that she was a producer at Nordisk Film. Sometimes it, it's uh, editors, um, like film editors, who get this kind of a job. Sometimes it's screenwriters. The commissioning editor who supported Sparrows was uh, actually a screenwriter herself for many years and wrote all the Perflu movies. So these, the commissioning editors are people who have a vast knowledge of the industry and often know the people that are actually applying uh, their fund. And they can support each three to four movies a year. Is that, yeah. So they have to say no many, many times. I think that's why sometimes commissioning editors probably have one of the most hardest jobs in the world because they have to say no to projects they like all the time. So that's how it works. Yeah, actually, there are actually three commissioning editors because there's also one, you know, which is mainly, which main focus is uh, on uh, children and youth. Uh, films, uh, and that is right now Oke Sandgren, a, a Swedish, uh, now Danish uh, director and producer, and has been doing films and TVs for I don't know, 30, 35 years. Uh, so there are three commissioning editors, and one with a specific focus on the children and youth um, films. Yeah. Yeah, the questions as well for the yeah, definitely. Do you have to take it? Hi, the, the system you just described with the uh, commissioning editors at the uh, film fund is the same system that we have in Iceland. But you also said that in another system there for commercial films, we don't have that here. Could you describe uh, that system for us? Uh, yes, actually Silent Heart uh, was made at that uh, 
system which is a little bit weird and because on paper it seemed you know it's a chamber play and you know about you know somebody's going to die in the end and uh, uh, you know uh, yeah it, and, a, and a drama you know so but we have you know also besides the three commissioning editors supporting uh, uh, mainly artistic uh, no not artistic films but films uh, from you know and artistic, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 that, you know, they don't have to think about how commercial the film, the films will be. You know, they have to, to simply look at the artistic quality of the projects. And then we have the market scheme, uh, which is uh, a totally another. You know, it, it, it has its own life. You know, uh, you have, we have three, four, four deadlines a year, three deadlines a year, I think. Uh, so on the commissioning editors, you can just send in projects, you know, and and then there's like uh, four to six weeks of you know responding time. But at the market scheme, uh, you market support scheme, you we have three deadlines a year. So you kind of know we have one here, we have one here, and we have one here. And then you can um, you you can you can get some money for development, not that much. So you have to the production company has to go very far itself, you know, because it's supposed to be very commercial. Uh, or not very, but it, ha it has to be films with a commercial potential. Uh, and, and there are some levels, you know, uh, I think it's around 150,000. I mean, uh, somebody has to, to look at this project at the Film Institute and say, we believe that this film can sell at least 150,000 uh, tickets in the Danish cinemas or something. You know, they have different, you know, very commercial uh, uh, ways of uh, looking at the projects. And then, um, so, but the companies have to go quite far themselves in the, in the development, uh, which is very different from the commission, commissioning editor uh, scheme, uh, where, as Mikkel said, you can get, I mean, you can start with, you know, just giving them, you know, applying with three pages of, you know, some kind of, of storyline, whatever, and, and then you get support for treatment, for first draft, for second draft, for blah, 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 and it can continue for two or three years or something. And you go through all the development phases and get money for that and then production support. And at the market uh, scheme, you can get, I think, only one development support. It's not very big. So it's just for, you know, you, and you need to deliver, um, you know, a script or something. Uh, and uh, and then you can only get one development support and then you have to apply for production support and in order to be able to apply for production support you need 60% of your financing uh, confirmed uh, otherwise you cannot apply for production support and uh, DFI the Danish Film Institute will only support a maximum of 40% of the of the total financing and that is also very different from the commissioning editor system, where it's very often DFI who's in as first financing partners, you know, supporting the project from the beginning, also financing-wise, you know, so we can go out to the TV stations, the other finances in Denmark, and also abroad, uh, around in, in the Nordic countries and in Europe, and say, See, look, we, all, we, we already have the, the blue stamp from the Danish Film Institute on the, on the, on the market scheme, it's uh, we have to i mean dfi are the last uh, it, it, it is the last uh, you know financing partner to get on board okay that's so it's like a top financing and you have to have 60% yes. already from other sources yeah so where do they get that money is it we, the company's we, own money or it's a, it's a tv i mean yeah. it is commercial projects so i mean you have to be able to i mean D, it, i mean it's a very clever system for, for dfi because uh, if you want to um, to try to convince DFI that it is a commercial project, then you should have been able to convince somebody else that it is a commercial project. So that is TV, Danish TV. It's uh, obviously a Danish and uh, Scandinavian uh, theatrical uh, distributor, and also you know for all the other platforms. Uh, and then it can be you know a, a film fund. It can also be uh, money from outside the country, definitely. Uh, you just have to have convinced somebody else about the commercial potential before you can go to DFI. Okay, so, okay, okay sorry. Uh, one more thing, uh, as I'm holding this, how many films are produced or supported by the uh, film fund in Denmark? You said either one of the 
two commissioners could report three to four. Yeah, it's around, tw it around 20 a year. Around 20. Yeah. So the artistic ones are like, you know, six, seven, eight. No, ten it, maybe and ten yeah, commercial it, ones. No, right? there, there are three. I mean, it would be around. Uh, it would be. Uh, it would be. Uh, I don't know. Sixty, seventy percent would be. Uh, I think maybe three, four is a little bit in the lower end. Maybe. Yeah. Also now that is also very interesting to talk about. Now with we have we we just with the new uh, film. Uh, uh, law that was, you know, we have like four years, uh, we have a film law for four years, you know, where the government has to go in and, you know, negotiate with the different parties and and then you ha we have a film law for four years. And in this new film law that, that started uh, this year, last year, this year, yeah. 1st of January, 15, and then goes to 19, there is a new supporting scheme again. It is a low budget scheme not a part of new danish green but simply that the commissioning editors are also now you know allowed and have to spend some money on low budget projects with uh, you know with a budget limit uh, uh, you know on either three million danish kroners or six million danish kroners you know the films cannot be more expensive than that and that is a way of of trying to get more talents you know uh, doing films again uh, and uh, getting more films uh, through the system, uh, again knowing that uh, that it is important to make films all the time to become better, uh, and um, so that is again generating more films. But it's around 20, and I think that um, that uh, 12, 13, 14 of the films will be supported by the artistic commissioning editing system. Uh, this divide between <coughs> the artistic and the commercial is fascinating. Um, one knock against European documentaries in particular has been, um, for for North American viewers, has been that the care for the audience has not been there. That they already have their funding in place, so they don't care in on an aesthetic sense of what an audience is going to get from it. They've already made their money as soon as they made their film. If you could talk about in Denmark how these films are approached and appreciated, that those that are coming out of the commercial realm through DFI are are the films that we know of and we celebrate from Denmark. How many of those have come from that stream rather than the artistic stream? And clearly, since you're working with so many Icelandic directors, there isn't the impetus that since it's from the DFI, it has to be Danish film and Danish culture, that you are looking for excellence in worldwide and international cinema uh, if you could talk about that dynamic in Denmark, whether or not they they are applauding the fact that essentially tax funder money is going to tell the stories from this little tiny island nation, um, you're telling your story thanks in part to the taxpayers of another country. Would you like to answer this? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, the, the, uh, like I said before, uh, by uh, describing the, the the Danish nation, there's a reason why they have one of the best welfare system in the world and why it's a wealthy nation with no natural resources. They think out of the box. They see potentials. Uh, and uh, as well within the f film school, uh, they are... Uh, most of the students are Danish, but uh, they, uh, I assume, look at it as a as a asset to get people from all over the world or other Nordic countries as well to bring other influences to constantly evolve and and d uh, develop. So, yeah, Danes are clever. They always get something out of it, even though for. Or us common people, uh, it doesn't make sense, but they know what they're doing. So uh, they should answer this question, not me. <laughs> no, no. You know, there were quite a few questions inside of your one question, I think. But um, Typical, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but uh, one thing I'd like to add is that um, at the film school, I had, uh, I was working with two directors from Iran, 
um, and there was also Norwegian students and Swedish students, and I was learning a lot from working with these people. Um, so, and it's, I guess the, the Danish taxpayers would not necessarily be very happy that um, some of the money goes to a film that is uh, mainly Icelandic and it's shot in Iceland and uh, Icelandic language, Icelandic uh, director and all this. I mean, they probably wouldn't appreciate it too much. But um, on the other hand, for, uh, for, for Nimbus film, it's great to be involved in such a project. Um, it's great for me as a producer. It's great for the part of the Danish crew, crew. You know, it was the editor was from Denmark. To give an example, it was great for him to be on board of the project. Everybody learned a lot, and to be a part of a success is just really important for us. That's also why most Danish movies nowadays are co-productions. Um, not all, but most, because uh, we always get something out of it. And we also try to co-produce the other way around, where we um, chip in money for other people's projects. Um, to give you an example, right now my company is involved in, in a Mexican co-production and um, this sounds maybe a little bit strange, but uh, the Danish Film Fund has a support scheme which is really, really good for co-productions. So we are being approached all the time to uh, help out and try to fund projects from all over the world. And, um, and, and that is also an important part of the Danish success, is that we are trying to reach out and be in... Yes? That was the conclusion. Yes, but it, you, you named it. I want, I want to say um, something um, connected to that. It's, um, it's amazing how uh, Danish um, film workers um, are staying in Denmark. It's very few who is leaving and go and they do maybe do uh, um, worldwide productions, but they stay in Denmark. So it seems like Denmark is... Um, uh, has a great success of keeping their talent inside Denmark and still doing world um, productions, worldwide productions. How how come? What is it that Denmark do so well? Because it's it seems like there's a, there's a um, like it's it's mostly Bill August who has been uh, very much abroad, um, and but most of the directors go back. Not you. Well, you stay here, yeah. I don't know. Can you answer that? Uh, what is attractive? Yes, what is attractive? Yeah. Uh, I think we have uh, described uh, the safety net and, and just uh, the visionary thoughts about the, in, in the Danish film society and, uh, and the cultural understanding in, in, in general. And I think that's just what we have been talking about answers your question. Uh, Danes are as well aware of not to be too nationalistic uh, about things. Uh, they see a success in going into a Mexican film, and by countries helping each other, yeah, they are all baking a cake and they all eat it afterwards, if it tastes good or, or bad. But yeah, that's on a joint buffet. So I think in, in a, I think in general. Uh, uh, and I get it quite often. I'm uh, always uh, talked. Uh, is quite often. I'm an Icelandic director. Of course, I, I'm, I'm Icelandic, but I'm Danish as well. I lived nine years in Denmark. I'm educated through the Danish system. Uh, the Danish system has raised me as well as the, uh, as, as the Icelandic system. And uh, I think within arts, uh, in the fine arts, you never talk about where the artist is coming from. He's an artist and he is, is placed somewhere. And then he moves from Berlin to Copenhagen, but, uh, but you never talk about the nationality of an artist. And when we, the, the small nations, we have to stick together to make our uh, projects. So, and uh, the Nordic countries are aware of uh, that. So we ha help each other to we have so much in common with uh, how we uh, run our societies. We have uh, more or less the same social values. And then we are divided into those individual nations. But uh, it's as well we are re representing Nordic culture uh, as, as a whole. And uh, yeah, I, I don't like it when, I'm, when my nationality is pointed out 
in, in either directions because uh, so far my productions have been uh, belonging to everybody that wants to join the party and both nations are responsible for yeah, uh, me being the filmmaker that I am and it's uh, yeah, and it's. I, I think we should let go of these national, uh, nationalistic thoughts and uh, of who owns what, and uh, and etc. We should just be happy that that we have an understanding, and we are helping each other to try to do uh, good things. I, I don't want to hog. Uh, um, forgive me, but just the first part of my question. Uh, a Zentropa film, uh, The Hunt, um, any of these international Oscar-nominated giant successes, any of those coming through the system as a commercial side, or are those all coming through on the artistic side? If you could talk about films that we consider artistically successful on the other side of the Atlantic, how many of those came through on one side or the other? And do Danish filmgoers delineate between the film that's gone through the system as the commercial film versus the artistic film? To start with the last question, no, they don't. They have no idea who uh, has supported what, what uh, how, and when, and whatever. They, and that is nothing that is, you know, you know, brought up in the media. It's nothing, you know, it, it, it has, it, you know, it's just a film. And if they like it uh, and uh, feel they need to see it, then they go in. So they have no idea how... Uh, how the films are financed, and and what kind of scheme and so on. Uh, most of the films you're talking about, uh, which are known internationally, are from the uh, commissioning editor uh, system, yeah, and not the and not the market commercial scheme. Uh, but uh, uh, and the hunt. Uh, I mean, nobody thought. I mean. Uh, uh, Thomas had made Submarino his first. I mean, his kind of comeback after many years of, uh, of uh, yeah, of other films, and uh, and uh, nobody. I mean, The Hunt was a small film, you know, and uh, and nobody expected it. It would be that. I mean, Submarino was not at all that big in any way, so nobody expected it. So it that was that. I don't think that would ever have been. I mean, yes, Mass Megason was in the lead. That is, you know, yeah, but he was not a commercial name at that point. I mean, Submarino sold uh, very little in the Danish cinemas. Uh, so, yeah, he was not a commercial name anymore. Uh, on a commercial uh, supporter, I mean, Silent Heart is supported uh, now there, and I think that they have tried now DFI because uh, prior it has been like like this that uh, that uh, it has mainly been like uh, uh, prequels and sequels and family youth film uh, family films uh, uh, being uh, 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 you know uh, you know uh, concept movies being made on the commercial um, uh, supporting scheme. And they have tried, you know, I think it's weird, you know, I don't know that much about it, but when I look at what people see, also especially in our country, which is, you know, what the system is, you know, uh, uh, looking, you know, after, uh, the, I mean, the, the, the market support scheme is not looking on what is going to be a, a great international commercial success. They're looking at the domestic market. Uh, and the films that are the biggest successes in uh, in Denmark, that is, you know, like high quality uh, uh, um, uh, dramas with, you know, an emotional, uh, 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 you know, that are emotionally connecting to the audience, like Susanne Bia and The Hunt and Silent Heart and, and those kind of films. So I think that DFI the last couple of years have, you know, been trying, I know they have been trying to upgrade <laughs> the, the, the market uh, uh, scheme and, and, you know, they're trying to get the bigger directors, you know, Susanne Bia, Winterberg, Per Flu, now Bill August, uh, again, to get them in, you know, uh, I mean, it's opening up much more. They, they, they want the quality to uh, also be quite high uh, in the in the market uh, scheme. So, but, but most of the films you uh, will know have been supported by commissioning editors. The commissioning editors uh, would support Lars von Trier any day, 
and the market scheme would support clown if if you know that so that kind of frames it yeah Uh, I know you touched on this before, but uh, to me it seems that the magic of Danish cinema has got a lot to do with the screenwriting. The dogma movement was kind of more director-oriented, but after that in the late 90s suddenly there were all these great screenplays, about half of them written by Thomas Anders Jensen. Uh, and this is not entirely, I mean this is not coincidental, yeah, there was a lot of money put into it. Was it through the school system primarily, or was, were there other ways? And following on from that, when you're talking about the creative triangle, it seems like kind of such an obvious way to do it, and yet nobody's doing it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, in Hollywood, it's you know it's superstar directors or actors or producers who kind of push things along. I think in Iceland, it's mostly just bloody-minded directors who get their works out there without much support. So, yeah. Uh, so, what can we learn from this, and why? Why isn't every, anywhere, everyone else doing it? And they said the Norwegians are, and their films are getting better. So. <coughs> uh, yeah, no, I, <laughs> I always uh, talk the shortest and get the, get the harder questions. No, it's, uh, uh, you summed it up qu uh, quite well. And, uh, and basically the, the biggest, uh, yeah, the, those that have the biggest power in Danish film uh, cinema today are the screenwriters. Uh, Danish film and the success of Danish film has been based on on on, on the manuscripts, and basically, that's how I at least understood the dogma moment. Uh, go away from tracks and, and 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 technical issues, emphasize on the story, and so emphasizing on the story. Uh, has been yeah the the fundament of this success of uh, Danish film. Uh, yeah. That was a totally uh, script uh, uh, based uh, project, you know, with Mons Rukov, the the old you know master and script mentor at the Danish film school. Uh, who uh, wrote the script together with Thomas, which was his student at the film school. Uh, so, I, I mean, and it, you are, you're totally right, it's so obvious, but I mean, and, and some are doing it somewhere and others are not. I also think, I mean, it's a really difficult question because it's also so much about, you know, tradition. I mean, and it's again, the, I mean, this boring, very uh, obvious, you know, distinction between the old Hollywood, you know, with the really, really strong, you know, the old good Hollywood <laughs> with the really, really strong scripts and very, very strong uh, scriptwriters uh, uh, telling a story uh, that directors would then uh, go on board and, uh, you know, put their colors on the story. Uh, and and then you have the whole auteur uh, European uh, 60s thing that have, it has just been, I think the whole uh, auteur thing has just been so uh, dominant in the in the European uh, film uh, uh, minds uh, set for 40 years, for 40 years, you know, and uh, so it, it was really in Denmark. It was a huge thing when in the 90s when you know, I mean. In Denmark, you didn't have a, 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 a script. I, I don't know when did the script line begin uh, at the film school, for example, and the producer line. And I mean, it was all about the director. And the director sucks, Runa. No, <laughs> no. But it was. I mean, it's. I, I guess it's about finding some, you know, golden balance. I mean, between uh, because because films only with a strong script and not a strong director or a strong personal voice. And vision that is also not very good. Uh, I mean, so it's, yeah. Uh, to counterattack this, this a little bit, this is the fundament of uh, why uh, Danish film has been uh, going well, and 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 then uh, as well uh, uh, TV uh, after that. But generally, I think because you were saying the authors have been uh, controlling European cinema for decades. The manuscripts have been dominating uh, Europe now for I don't know, ten years or what, whatever, and uh, we need a balance back because uh, I think more and more 
films that are as well supposed to be art house are have exact uh, plot points and 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 point of no returns and everything on the exact second and uh, stories in general has they have been become too written yeah con yeah it's it's it have become too much of a construction so I th and i think that's the next uh, thing that danish uh, film has have to emphasize on is to to personalize uh, the the stories again uh, towards the authors uh, and then, then then i'm talking about the director and maybe that's uh, now the 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 manuscript line has just been changed uh, within the film school before it was two years that the that the manuscripters uh, yeah the, the writers were there and the rest of the lines were there for four years now yeah they are going to be hand in hand for four years this golden triangle that had been talked about it yeah 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 yeah, or this triangle, creative triangle, or whatever. Yeah, this triangle was not functioning. Uh, for example, when uh, when I was attending the school, uh, they only had these two years, uh, and they were. Uh, I I tried to like to do a midterm uh, project with a r really good uh, writer. It comes more or less easy to me to write, but I was really hoping that I could find a writing partner uh, within the film school. And we started writing on this midterm project, but he had to quit because he had to deliver so many other stuff. There wasn't time for him to work with me. Uh, but uh, yeah, so problem or another way, uh, and it's going to be interesting to to see uh, uh, how, what comes out of uh, re-evoking uh, and and do it more systematically of of uh, of uh, of having. The visioner that is supposed to be the director and 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 the rest of the creative team hand in hand uh, uh, throughout the film school because uh, yeah because yeah in my opinion uh, film in general is too much of a construction today we need to get the visioner yeah to get, get the one that is supposed to be the creative vision uh, earlier in the process and be, be a more dominant force than it has been I'd, I need to add something to this, um, if, if nobody minds. We were in uh, Gothenburg for um, the work in progress with the uh, Sparrows, actually. And um, that's a really interesting place to go watch uh, work in progress if you are from any of the Nordic countries, because you get like a very good overview of what's going on in the other countries, and everybody shows more or less uh, five or six minutes from their upcoming movie, and I think it's a great place, actually. and. When when we were watching the Danish work in progress films, the the future Danish films that are coming out right now, um, they all had very clear concepts. There was the uh, history epic. There was a Danish zombie movie. There was a was there even a Danish uh, vampire movie? Maybe um, they they were all like uh, small Hollywood uh, pieces in a sense, mixed with Danish cinema. And um, one sales agent actually approached us and, and said, wow, the Danes are really trying to imitate Hollywood. And, you know, after that I was like, oh, are we? But when, when people come up, come up to me and, and told me something about Sparrows, they were never discussing the, the concept of the movie. They were always saying, wow, Runa is such an interesting director. And um, for, for all the Danish movies, people were always, what an interesting concept. And I think that... Um, Right now, it's really expensive to make movies in Denmark, and home entertainment has gone down, and so on. So a lot of the production companies are right now struggling, and they have to go for safe bets. And that forces many um, production companies to aim for um, something that can easily be described. And I think right now, um, for the next com yeah, for the next few years, we will have. This is just my personal guess, but but what we will have some sort of a small creative crisis in Denmark because. The, the concepts are being uh, developed so much and the artistic voices of the director has been neglected for years. So that is one of the things we need to take up again. And now we have been so lucky that we have the new low budget scheme where we can actually try and, and work on this ourselves. We have the opportunity to do something about it. So the Danish Film Fund has hopefully acted in time and we can, yeah, we can do something about it. But um, I, I just think that this was uh, Frightening to hear that well, all the Danish films are interesting concepts, but there were no interesting directors anymore. That was just 
We also all know that the lower budget we have, the more artistic freedom we have. Uh, I mean, that's how it has always been, I guess, and always will be. So uh, it's a really good thing with the new low budget uh, uh, scheme. Of course, it, it takes production companies and producers who are willing to to make these low budget films because, I mean, there's not a lot of money in it unless something is happening with the film afterwards. But that is a, that is, <laughs> that is a really tough bet. Uh, but there will always be a, a younger generation of producers who, who would be interested in doing that. So I think uh, we are ending this now, but uh, it's not really ending um, because uh, unless there is a very um, a question burning in your skin, there is one. Wait a minute a, a bit. But um, because also I just want to tell you there is a glass of wine outside and it's possible uh, that you will mingle a bit. So if there's something that you want to discuss with some of the, of the panel, um, I know maybe Runa will go out and have a cigarette outside and somebody can meet him outside the door. But uh, so there will be uh, maybe a half or an hour or mingle. And, um, so, but we'll take one more question. Hmm? Okay, thank you. Uh, well, one of, we uh, talked mostly here about feature films, but I mean, uh, a big part of the success of uh, the Danish uh, cinema has been television. And uh, I was just interested in how that works. Is it the same people that are writing, directing, producing, and the same companies that are making the TV, or is that different? Is it not the same people doing it? And what's the effect of this, and how is this working together, the television, the dra television drama and the feature films? So you have five, it's a huge, oh, so you have five minutes. It's a one-diner. I'm going to try to give you a short answer. The, the, the creative talents working in television are also doing feature films and vice versa. Jesper, in fact, in fact here has uh, produced Rita, which is a highly acclaimed uh, TV show. But I'm not going to pass him the mic because then he's going to do his Jesper monologue about all this. <laughs> but but um, uh, maybe some 15 years ago, before Nordic Noir was, was uh, crafted, then the US system was studied and it was found out that a lot of people who were working in the Danish uh, television were not coming from the film industry. They had just always been working in television. So especially um, DR, the national broadcasting, uh, yeah, national broadcaster in Denmark, they started to take feature film directors into the world of TV show, and then they started to take like really experienced um, sc screenplay writers from the film industry into television production, and that more or less changed the whole game. And now, you know, talents are walking back and forth all the time. So that was. As but you hold it. So. <laughs> Do you have a short comment? I just said once. <laughs> okay, so I just want to thank you very, very much. It's been very interesting. Thank you, the three of you, and, and thank you for coming. Okay, thank you.